Hey guys, Ron and Nate from Function Build Aquatics. What's up guys, this is our axolotl that we just picked up on Saturday. Yes, so we picked up this axolotl from who, Nate? From Michael Schramm. Michael Schramm is a amphibian breeder who specializes in newts, salamanders, and axolotl. And we met him at a reptile show in Hamburg, Pennsylvania this Saturday. And we were able to pick up this guy. He's our very first axolotl. It's a captive raised individual. He seems to be showing a lot of attention to the snails. So let's see if we can get some uh, action out of him as he pokes around and checks them out. Now these, these axolotls actually originate from Mexico, from two, actually two ponds, which, which sadly they are now extinct in their environment because of probably pollution and somebody Probably over collections is, yeah. is also beside pollution is also a main reason why these guys no longer exist uh, another portion of is one of the lakes that these guys originated from I believe was actually um, blocked up or drained to prevent flooding in some of the towns that the lake was near so unfortunately for axolotl the only large population is basically a captive held population so basic breeders and collectors as far as I know are the only ones that have a large group of these guys available there may be some small holdouts in some ditches and and uh, other ponds and lakes in Mexico but for the most part these guys are almost near extinct now I think if you had a pond since we live in New Jersey we can't keep anything out in the winters but I think they would do absolutely amazing in the summer. They would have some protection. We would hide. We would pretty much give them hiding places because they tend not to like sunlight, and this, and and they can. They have no eyelids, so so actually, if you put too much light, they'll actually not do as well as you normally would have them. Yeah, Nate's absolutely correct. They don't have eyelids, so they tend to shy away from light. Now, the only reason why this tank is actually lit right now is because we're taking this video. But other than that, I have no, uh, I have no light on this tank and have no intention in uh, putting a light on this tank. The only light that would be available to the axolotl will be the light, the ambient light that's in the room, which is not a whole lot. Um, now, another quick uh, bit of information about the axolotl. These guys are fully aquatic salamanders that never develop a land phase. They never leave the lake, pond, or ditch that they actually live in. They don't lose their gills. So unlike tiger salamander larvae, which go through a stage of development and eventually become tiger salamanders and terrestrial, these guys stay in the water pretty much all the time. Temperature requirements for these guys. Anything in the 60s, let's say the low 60s, up to about 69, maybe even 70, but not a whole lot more than that. They tend to like cooler water, so a heater is absolutely not necessary. They like cooler water. They like dimly lit aquariums. They like sand substrate. Um, I'm feeding them currently, I'm feeding him currently salmon pellets that I picked up from Michael Schramm. Uh, I've tried some earthworms, but so far he didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. They do hunt with their sense of smell. I don't know about their eyesight, whether their eyesight is super strong. But as far as I know, their sense of smell is very strong. So he seems to uh, poke around and sniff things and then takes a bite. He's been really interested in these ram horn snails I put in this tank to actually act as a uh, cleanup crew. So he's been very interested in those guys. Now, these fish come in a variety. Fish? Fish, I meant to say. Oxalotis or axolotl. Axolotl. Tend to have different colors and they you can get them pink, albino, a wild color, and sort of like a darker color than this. Sort of like it's pretty weird. Almost like a black, yeah. I, I yeah. actually I tend to really like the more wild uh, colored phases. And uh, we will probably pick up a few more of these guys in time, but I figured we'd start with him and we'd learn as much about him before we actually picked up more and then uh, dedicated a larger aquarium to them. Um, these guys get pretty big, 
Uh, as far as I know, they can range anywhere from 8 inches up to maybe even 10 to maybe even 12 inches, depending on, on um, you know, individuals. Um, so far, I, I've been wanting one of these for probably years. And of all the years I've been in the hobby involved with reptiles and amphibians, I've never owned one. So I'm so glad that this is my first time having one and sharing this with Nate. Unfortunately, Oscar, which is his name, is giving us his rear end instead of his front, his face, which is the coolest part of him. So we're just going to leave it at that. But there'll be more videos of our axolotl, his setup, his development, and the different things we do with his uh, feeding. And uh, as far as I know, we intend to just keep him by himself for probably the next few months or so. Probably. And, but then as he starts to grow, of course, we'll go to a bigger tank. And then maybe we'll pick up a few more at that point. So like I said, Ron and Nate from Function Build Aquatics. If you haven't already subscribed. Please do so. If you enjoy what we're doing, we do try to mix in some herpetology along with our ichthyology videos. Meaning, we do love reptiles and amphibians also. So hopefully we keep you guys engaged and pick up some new uh, subscribers because of the axolotl and some of our new projects. Bye. Bye.